I am uh, Josh from Victims and Villains, and I am joined by Melissa Knapp from, uh, she is the original creator, one of the writers, and the director behind the short film, Torn Together, which made its uh, appearance at this past year as an official selection of Genre Blast. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, thank you. I have to say, I love really loved this film i thought this film was this this film is really hard to explain um like it's it feels experimental it feels personal it feels uh like it's it's saying a lot and like there's like not a whole lot of dialogue in this movie um but can you guys can you kind of tell our audience who maybe have not had a chance to catch it on the festival circuit yet kind of a little bit more about the the subject matter that this movie entails yeah so you kind of nailed it there um it is an experimental short um it's extremely personal so it uh deals with um kind of battling with two parts of your identity so it takes three people and all the dialogue which is all voiceover we never actually speak in the film is something that we've all heard in real life that someone said to us or that in Ava's case have said to themselves. So it is the, what you go through in your head um, as you go through life kind of struggling with identity issues. And for, you know, for this being a channel and us being an organization that really talk about mental health, identity is a conversation that, I don't feel like gets talked about enough. And what I really appreciated about this short was the fact that that was pretty much the entirety of its subject matter was you are essentially following uh, three characters that are all kind of struggling with this and all kind of having this, um, you know, this this crisis and you're kind of seeing how it's, how this, this struggle and how this journey is really affecting their own mental health. And so this this move this short film is uh, co-written with uh, two other writers, and you talked about the 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 aspect of creating this, but shortly before we start recording tonight, and can you talk about the retaining a lot of those themes of like mental health and like identity and like pushing them to the forefront while still being this like very experimental film. Yeah, so I it honestly didn't know how to tell the stories in any other lens other than experimental because it all takes place kind of in your head and how to express those feelings of what um, you're going through. So yeah, it was, we each, I had Francis Chang and Ava Davis, um, and then we each wrote some lines that really stuck with us throughout life. So some of those things are from like when we were children all the way up to current. So putting those all together and each having our own kind of demons, you saw the shadowy figures Mm -hmm. that were in it um, and how that really makes you feel on the inside, just being like torn apart, right? Between the two parts of your identity. So I did have concerns because it is so personal. It is our true feelings. Um, kind of how we would approach it on set and make sure it was a safe space for everyone who was going through this. So it was real. That was really tough because it was it was really emotional. Just to relive the moments and go through it. I'm curious how a short film like this even like comes up into kind of conversation and and kind of how the the genesis of this even starts because like I said it it's not really a subject matter that, you know, people talk about. It's not like, you know, most relationships, people aren't addressing their mental health. They're not addressing, you know, right. feelings of inadequacy or, uh, you know, depression, but this film, like it, it just really lays it all out. And it that's, does. it's, can you kind of talk about the, how this project started? Sure. Um, I, it started as a personal project for myself that I didn't intend to share with any. I just was going through some things and I really wanted to, the only way I knew how to express it was maybe do it through some sort of art. So I, and my piece is about being biracial. So I'm half black, half white, right? 
Um, and there's a lot of things that you go through growing up if you don't have all the proper support or people in your life. So I was talking with my friend Ava, who's in the film, and I was telling her, hey, can you can you help me with this project? I'm really, I really want to work some stuff out. And she was like, yes, I would love to actually be a part of that as well. Because she's um, transgender. So she was going through transition at the time. Um, so we discussed it and what that could look like. And I was like, okay, well, how do we feel about making this something for people to see and we can open up conversations because clearly identity issues are uh, look like a, a large uh, different things for everyone um so we're like okay are we willing to share this with everybody um and open up the conversation okay sure uh but we knew we couldn't just do the two of us because that would, it wouldn't be a great film but um so we we very specifically asked around with friends who we thought maybe because it's really hard to bring up that topic like you said so we put it out there to a couple of friends and um, Francis, who's the third person was like, I would love to talk about being Asian American and how that, that goes into it. So that's kind of how it started and then how it progressed through. What was the, what was the relation, what was the, like the creative relationship, like were kind of like hearing all of, uh, you know, kind of, flowing together did the project kind of initially start out by you know sitting around telling one another stories and struggles and histories and then kind of uh, progress into the creative or was it kind of like hey I have this idea this is how I want to tell my portion of the story it did so we the three of us sat down and we had many different discussions um just how we how we thought it would work to tell the story um what we were comfortable sharing, but mostly for the creative part, we did. We sat down, we were like, okay, this is what we want to say. This is what we want to portray. I had a very specific picture in my head of what I wanted the film kind of to look like. And it originally started much bigger, much grander, much, just a lot more. And then um, we were like, okay, budget-wise, is that <laughs> is that reasonable? <laughs> we're funding this ourselves. Um, and then a couple things came up and we we put it on the back burner because, you know, COVID happened, all of that. So we're like, OK, we'll put it on back burner and see where we're at after the pandemic. And then when things started to ease up, I was like, you know, I'm going to rewrite the script and just remove all the elements that are just not serving the script or just it doesn't feel like we're telling the story that we really want to tell. It was just too much. We we're trying to cover up all the emotions and everything. And so I stripped this script all the way down to bare, bare minimum. There's nothing, there's no set really. There's, it's just you facing your demons and, and talking about them. And so that they, we all sat down, sent them the thing. I said, what do you think about this? They changed up a few things of their own, added in their, you know, own, uh, a tiny bit of set. There's some moving props and things in there. That's kind of how that works. I honestly can't imagine this movie on a grander scale. I feel like yeah. part of its charm is is the fact that the story that's being told is this really raw, really vulnerable, just really brave exploration of these characters and having the the chance to kind of get to see the the narrative match the actual like what you're seeing on screen i feel like that's part of the charm of kind of seeing that getting to experience that uh so I, I we talked earlier about like the fact that this film is if it is experimental and the the third act of this kind of erupts into this really beautiful kind of almost uh interpretive dance I feel like it's kind of the best way to to say it. where did that come from? Why? How did you guys kind of arrive at like this is where we feel like the story needs to end here? Yeah. So we wanted the message of hope at the end, right? Um. So we decided to put in because we're all lucky enough to have it a person 
or a thing that really helped us um, push through and deal with the emotions. So I chose my grandmother because she was always supportive and I could tell her anything. Um, And I was really lucky to have that. And Ava chose her friend, Sammy. So that's the sunflowers you see at the end represent her friends. And then Frances didn't have a specific person, but she kind of leaned into the arts and they really saved her and helped her express her feelings. And so that's what you saw there at the end. That's awesome. And like with that, like, obviously I feel like this is it's not giving anything away like how how like this this ends and stuff like this um but with this kind of being this interpretive dance and and kind of like this really beautiful moment for this really otherwise like thematically really heavy film like you said like really glad like you walk you start this film but it's kind of it is very thematically heavy but you end on this like very high hope note um can you kind of talk about some of like I guess it's, I've never had to, I've never had a chance to interview anyone that's like done any sort of like theater or any sort of like dance elements into it. Can you talk about like integrating that into kind of the final product and kind of some of the challenges you guys faced along the way of making that transition? So we didn't actually choreograph much just for day of. Um, I wanted it to be really kind of fluid and see what happens, right? Um, with the movements and just wherever you were emotionally and for the space that we had, I wanted to see what would work. So it was really, that was really a team effort. And I included everyone on that, um, the whole team that was there. So I was like, we would rehearse it. Anybody have anything they might think would work or flow within this? And that's kind of how that process worked. And it was very quick. We, the only pieces we did kind of rehearse before um, was positioning, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, for the people, but um, the lifting and things like that, we all, we just did day up. It's kind of just what felt natural and, and worked with everyone. It really flows really immaculately. Like it's, it's, I never would have been just been like, yeah, the majority of this was like, just kind of like improv um, and I think that kind of just goes to speak to the the artistry of everyone that's involved and um, just how you guys were able to really craft this beautiful story that like it's really, you know, I we cover a lot of film festivals here and um, there are some films that you watch once and you're like, man, that was great. And then you have some films that like really challenge you as a viewer to like think about the things that the film is speaking on think about the things that the film is uh you know inviting you into with the character journey with torn together did you guys have any intentions of you know really wanting to uh leave something like that with the latter with the audience because it kind of almost seems like this to you was just this was kind of like a a form of like therapy for you to kind of get a lot of these emotions out. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted it to invoke some sort of feeling with the audience, whatever that might be. Um, It was definitely an intention to make people uncomfortable um, to question things that they say, even when they think that maybe it's not something that would hurt or make someone uncomfortable. So all of those questions, I wanted to invoke some sort of feeling and all those words that you hear um, in in the audience. But I also wanted to leave it on a happy note because you don't want to just leave someone <laughs> feeling so low, right? Like <laughs> that's, not, that's not fun at the end of a film. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely wanted it to bring up questions. I definitely wanted it to open conversations. Um, and it, it has. I've, I've gotten a lot of messages after festivals um, or even at festivals when we get to attend. It's really opened a lot of conversations, which I appreciate. 
It's one of the things that I really loved about this, getting a chance to see this, because with the with festival like Genre Blast, what I appreciate about that specific festival is that like you get literally everything. I mean, there was everything oh. from music videos to, to comedies to horror comedies to downright scary. And then you have in the midst of that, you have these like really personal dramatic pieces like Torn Together and you know I I feel like I've hyped up a lot of why people should check this out um what does the the rest of your guys' festival run look like um you know and if people are not fortunate enough to to get to attend one of those festivals is there plans to release it on a platform like YouTube or Vimeo It'll definitely be um, released after the festival run next year. Um, I only plan to do a year with the, the film. Um, and we're almost up the beginning of next year. But we are playing in four of the festivals right now. Two are here in Atlanta. Um, we got into one in Boston, which I believe is called Screaming Ostrich, <laughs> which I think is the coolest name. Um, cool. The Hobnobian Film Festival as well and we're still pending for like 17 festivals so we'll see all right let's well, i that's definitely great. invested a lot of money in um switching to festivals but we'll see smart yeah yeah uh, well the movie is called torn together it is a great short film that as melissa said is currently touring the uh the at least the country i don't is it is it playing internationally yet or uh we it did film it it did screen in canada already and we've been over to like italy as well but uh we'll see what other international ones we get into if we do so maybe it'll maybe maybe torn together fingers crossed will be in taking over the world but if you guys uh don't get a chance to catch it at the it's festival run you guys have an opportunity to check it out next year We'll provide a link, so make sure that you guys follow us on our socials. Links are in the bio below. But where can people find you online and find out more information about Torn Together? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at Life Love Adventures, and we have a Facebook page, which I believe is just Torn Together Film on Facebook. And I also just want to throw this out there as well for anyone that is currently watching this and you're going through any of the, the subjects uh, that we've talked about in this this interview, ranging from uh, transitioning or uh, racism or uh, identity, mental health, anything like the the le- depression, anything along those lines. We also have links to our mental health resource library in the show notes below. So, Melissa, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day to talk about Torn Together. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's it's, it's really nice to share the message. So. Yeah, like I said, if you guys get a chance to, to check out this movie, please check it out and make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button below as we are going to be bringing you guys more Genre Blast coverage in the coming weeks. Have a good night.